Welcome to the Cross Border Interviews. I am your host, Christopher Brown. In today's episode, we recently got back from Brandon, Manitoba, where the 2024 Association of Manitoba Municipalities Conference took place. Now, amidst the energy of this event, we seized the opportunity to engage with local leaders hailing from across Manitoba. Though this episode may be briefer than our standard episodes, its significance remains undiminished. Today, we are delving into the pressing issues confronting communities firsthand, amplifying the voices of municipal leaders and offering insights into the diverse challenges faced by local governments in Manitoba. So we will be right back after a quick message with cross-border interviews featuring the municipality of Harrison Park Reeve, Ian Droll. Are you passionate about local governance and municipal issues? Do you believe in the power of community-driven conversations? Then join us at the Cross Border Network, where we bring together voices from across Canada to shine a spotlight on the challenges and the triumphs of our municipalities. But we need your support to keep the conversation going. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca today to show your support by backing the show monthly or making a one-time annual donation. Your contribution will help us grow and expand our reach, bringing important stories to even more listeners across the nation. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can amplify the voices of local communities. Together, we can shape a brighter future for all. Cross Border Network, where local matters and your support counts. Visit us today at crossborderinterviews.ca. Reeve, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, well, thanks I for having me on. I want to start by asking a simple question, but an overarching one. Where did your sense of duty to serve your community come from, Ian? Uh, just, you know, I, I was one day, I was in a meeting. I, um, I went to the RM meeting, and I was just seeing everybody sitting there and the, the issues that everybody was facing, and I felt it was my duty to step up and, and help out as much as I can. Um, I've been in business now for 21 years, and I'm passionate about growing our community economically and uh, trying to get people to our area. And I just feel that my expertise in the business world could carry it over into the municipal world. And that's how I got into this whole thing. So prior to that first meeting, had you taken an interest in municipal politics or are you like the many municipal leaders that I speak to had no interest until something had bubbled up inside? Well, I guess it started back when I was 16 years old. I got a job as a summer student working for a town, uh, just, you know, working there. And then I kind of went through all the steps. And by the time I was 23, I was running a grader for the municipality. I left that and then I ended up starting my own business and then I, I kind of got away from the municipal politics the end of it for about 15 years and then one day yeah I, I was on the LUD committee for our community which was just kind of a, a small fraction of the municipal side and I had to go to a council meeting and I was just sitting there listening to all the issues and everything that they were facing and thought I could give a hand here and, and see how this works so I started out as a councillor uh, six years ago now I'm the Reeve and uh, we keep going on from there. I have noticed across Canada, and I don't paint a broad stroke just in Manitoba, but across Canada, that there has been uh, a misunderstanding of the jurisdictional role that the municipality plays when you speak to residents, when residents approach you. Because you are closest to the people, you, they probably know you better than they know their MLA or their MP. Are you finding more and more people addressing you or asking you questions around federal issues or provincial issues? Or do they understand that the municipality has a role to play and they're going to ask you questions about the municipality? I, I think they, they don't understand how regulated municipalities <laughs> are by the provincial government. That is the big thing. Like, we can do so much, but then there, there's, there comes a tipping point where, okay, we can't move forward on this subdivision or we can't do this because the province doesn't give us that power. So that's the big thing is, is people don't understand that we are regulated by the province. And until you actually sit in the chair as a municipal leader, you don't see that, right? And you try to explain to people and people think that we're dragging our feet and we're not moving forward on projects or issues. But it, it all comes down to that we have regulations, we have standards, and we have to meet them with the province. And that's where the, the communication with the provincial government and now with the federal government being right beside Parks Canada has come into key. And you got to build those bridges and show that there's a trust between us and we can all work together. Is it hard? 
It is very hard. It takes time, especially like I just started in this. Then we had a we had a provincial government flip. <laughs> now we got a different party. We got a whole new set of leaders, leaders that are learning as they go. So yeah, it, it, it's very tough. Like I said, to to have that uh, that open discussion. So I want to talk about the RM of Harrison Park for a little bit, but before I do, I want to preface it as I always do on the show. This is not a motion of council. This is not a policy of council. This is not a direction of council. No. This is your opinion and your opinion alone. Yeah. In your opinion, what is the biggest challenge facing the RM today as of us talking right now? Well, we've got two two big issues that we've been fighting since uh, we took power. Um, the biggest one we started with when we first took in was uh, is short-term rentals. Short-term rentals across Canada has been a, an overarching issue. Uh, the federal government has done a little bit, but they haven't done anything. Uh, other municipalities, other provinces have taken the bull by the horns and done it. We did it. We were one of the first municipalities to bring in a bylaw and start regulating short-term rentals and licensing them. So are you them. talking about like the Airbnbs? Airbnb, okay. VRBOs, yes. We were one of the first ones to start licensing them in our municipality. And then from there, other municipalities throughout the province have taken the initiative to follow what we've done, right? So Can we I were kind why? of... Why did you think it was important? Well, what it was, was when COVID started, um, everybody started renting short-term rentals in our municipality, right? So we have a small community in Onil there, and it was it was snapping up houses, like, fast. And it was to the point we had about 90-some Airbnbs in a small community. Oh, wow. And uh, it was creating a lot of noise, traffic, dogs barking. They were party homes essentially because people were getting out of the city when COVID locked everything down and they were coming out renting a home. And and the biggest thing why we, we took it on was because we were losing affordable housing. If you have short-term rentals in your community, you do not have affordable housing. People are buying them up and making businesses out of them and they're just making money. And, and it was a great business for a lot of people. So we had to put a curb on it. So that was kind of the big issue that we took. And, and we're two years into it now this fall, actually, since we started sitting on it. And today, again, I spoke with the Minister of Municipal Relations saying that we need a sit down. I want to see the province of Manitoba adopt a strategy across the province for short-term rentals. And he agrees that, you know, instead of us saying, okay, here's the bylaw we did, you adopt it. Here's the bylaw, you adopt it. Because that's what other municipalities have been coming to us for. And I said, we just need one strategy now to say this is how short-term rentals operate. Did you, did you see a curb of short-term rentals not wanting to come in and people actually leaving the houses on the market and not just picking them up to turn them into short-term rentals? No. Or no. was there any consequences to the bylaw being in place? Because that's always the devil's advocate is looking back on it two years later. Do you see short-term rentals still popping up or is it being more regulated to the point where there are more apprehensive to buy a house in Harrison Parks. So the big thing now is is there was some resentment towards council as we were <laughs> shutting them down, which there's going to be. You know, you, there was a no-win situation there as council. We realized that. But now people understand that why we did it, right? So now the big thing for us is, okay, we got to start a new subdivision on the edge of town where we can have them. They can be in their own zone and have zoning for short-term rentals. Our province does not have zoning for short-term rentals. Other provinces, yeah. like Alberta, have zoning for short-term rentals so that's what i've asked the province for is zoning we could start new subdivisions people will build there knowing that they can do that right and as, as far as licensing them yeah we want them out of the residential area we want them more into the commercial zone that's what we've been overarching plan i guess of council from day one is to kind of get to that point right so for us that's what we've been looking at so you said there was two challenges that we're facing, and, we, and I kind of went off on a tangent there, so I apologize, yeah, but no, what's the second one? The second one is, has been, and, and this has been a big issue the last 24 hours in the province, is the AIS, the Aquatic Invasive Species of Clear Lake. Um, I know that our Premier came out yesterday and said he doesn't want Clear Lake to close. Uh, I get that, um, but I mean, there has to be some some look at how that would look if we didn't close that, right? Uh, aquatic invasive species are moved by water. So if you have standing water in your boat, those uh, zebra mussels can essentially attach and then move to another lake, right? So you got to clean, drain, dry. So if we want to have boats coming in and out of Clear Lake, then we have to say, okay, how does this look? We need more inspection then from the province. So this has been a big issue is now, okay, the Premier's come out and said that. I've asked now, okay, we need some money. We need an inspection station and a decontamination. In our municipality, we started an AIS program about seven years ago uh, to protect Sandy Lake, where I live, uh, just outside of Onernal. And it's worked great. But again, I mean, now is a good chance that 
We don't know if Clear Lake has them yet because they've got eDNA, they found live zebra mussels, they want to do testing more. I understand there's an economic impact if we close the lake, but there's also an economic impact if we keep it open and boats are flowing in and out and then we spread zebra mussels throughout the area. I'm going to ask the stupid question now. Two stupid questions. <laughs> there's no stupid questions. <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a host of a show. There's always stupid questions <laughs> on my show. Okay, so you were here at the AMM convention. They did have a, a breakout session around invasive species. Are you hearing from other municipal leaders who do have a lake or body of water in their communities that this is a concern, or is it a concern just for your community? No, it's a concern from all over the place. We we've got we had uh, I, I chaired that breakout session. We had leaders from Grand Rapids. We've had um, uh, from the Paw Thompson Lynn Lake. We've had from areas all over the province, even the eastern side of the province that's already infested over there. They they have other lakes they're protecting. So this is a province wide issue. Uh, I am on a panel of, uh, of uh, appointed by the province to an AIS forum to help kind of figure out a strategy for AIS and that's why I've asked now for the federal, provincial and the municipal government to sit down and make a plan immediately of how we're going to deal with this as a governing group because this is not just one group. This is an overarching issue that everybody needs to work together on. So the second stupid question but it's more of a political stupid question you know all three levels of government take a while to sit down at the table for any certain issue. I know it is an immediate need for your community today. What do you do as council, as Reeve, in the short term until that meeting does happen? Keep putting pressure Keep putting pressure on our provincial government to make that decision. But is there something you can be doing as a council to inspect those boats? Or is it just carte blanche right now and you're just hoping that people are doing their due diligence before they put their boats in the water? For me, yeah, we will do some inspections, but we can't physically do as much as we need to. We don't have the financial resources as a municipality to do it. That's where we need the province to come in. So that's the big thing is uh, we, we could do so much, but we're limited to what we can do. We don't have the resources that the province does. So uh, I've taken up more time than I probably expected and uh, we're at the 10 minute mark but I've got to ask in your opinion because I uh, always ask this question to wrap up every interview what makes the RM of Harrison Park such a unique place to live work and raise a family? It's it's the beauty of the community it's the area I mean we have houses going up all the time people retiring to the area people moving with families to the area because they want to be one with nature we have a beautiful area right on the south side of the park um, we have farming and tourism. That's our two things that drive our community. And uh, it, it's just a great place. Golfing, fishing, skidooing in the winter. It's, it's just being one with nature. And that's, that's what I love about our area. It's what they call God's country. Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and chatting with me today. Thank you. Like I said, much appreciated. Always. We want to thank the Association of Manitoba Municipalities for inviting us to this year's Spring Convention in Brandon, Manitoba. This episode would not have been achievable without their support. If today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews or our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. We are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. But your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can... Consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, just keep talking.